I'm mm -hmm. Virginia Holman. I'm the founder and current president of Island Wildlife, which is the lower Cape Fear chapter of the North Carolina Wildlife Federation. And I'm here with North Carolina Wildlife Federation's conservation coordinator, Luke Bennett, who you just heard. Luke is the author of the always wonderful Butterfly Highway newsletter from North Carolina Wildlife Federation. And I'm sure you see that in your email box every week. Um, we're here today with Asmund Azdal, who is the coordinator of operation and management of the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, the world's largest and most diverse seed vault. He is a Norwegian horticulturist and ecologist who for the past 25 years has been working with projects on conservation and use of plant genetic resources. And he has also worked as a researcher, project manager, and head of a research station in the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research, and has been a board member and conducted projects and working groups within the Nordic Gene Bank. And he is with us today all the way from Norway, which we appreciate very much. Osmund, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much for this uh, kind uh, presentation and thank you for inviting me to, to uh, inform about the seed vault to, to your, uh, your group. Um, let me start with just uh, some uh, facts about seeds. Uh, seeds uh, are the most important food source. It's a perfect structure for survival of plants uh, during cold uh, periods, during dry periods and so on. Seeds can be stored. Uh, seeds are nutritious. Uh, uh, seeds made it possible to, to, uh, to uh, develop modern farming machinery and so on. D uh, seeds uh, are DNA storage and also uh, uh, very importantly for the work we are doing and, and the work that uh, plant breeders are doing is that uh, seeds uh, are uh, products of, of crossing between the mother and father plants and, and new, new genetic combinations uh, occur in, in, in the seeds, making it possible to, uh, to, to produce new plant varieties. And uh, we eat mostly seeds, grass seeds actually. And um, here are some nice photos of, uh, of, of different kinds of seeds. Uh, it's, uh, it's very nice to work with these structures. They are very nice when you come close to them. And, uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating world to, to work with seeds. Uh, this is uh, only a slide with animals you will see during my presentation. And I am uh, uh, showing you this because um, in principle, this picture shows the, the diversity of uh, genetic diversity within species. We are used to deal with uh, with biological diversities and, and the diversity of uh, uh, different species. But uh, what we are doing at gene banks and at the seed vault uh, is to deal with the genetic diversity within species. And in principle, these three uh, animals are wolves. Uh, you don't find uh, the dogs, uh, but you find the genes that made it possible to uh, to develop dog breeds you find these uh, in the wild wolf so this illustrates uh, the, the diversity of uh, genetic combinations you, you find in wild uh, wild plants and then some examples uh, from plants diversity of beans um, this picture shows the the wild uh, uh, and, uh, wild plant that uh, that maize is developed from. Uh, the small plant at the small picture to the left is uh, Tripsacum, which is the, the forefather, uh, so to say, uh, for the maize. We do not find the wild plants we cultivate in the wild, but we find the genes within wild plants. This is also a quite fascinating uh, 
picture uh, in my mind. It shows the wild brassica uh, that you can find around the Mediterranean Sea. You don't find uh, the brassica vegetables in the wild, but you find the genes that made it possible to, to, to develop cabbage, uh, Brussels sprout, kohlrabi, kale, broccoli and cauliflower, all the genes that made it possible to develop these cultivated plants, they are found in the wild brassica. And we don't find cultivated wheat in the wild, but we find uh, the, the mother and father of, uh, of uh, why, uh, the most important food plant, which is uh, cultivated wheat. Uh, one of the parents is the emmer wheat, another parent it is goat grass, and um, uh, at one stage in history, 10,000 years ago or so, uh, a quite spontaneous uh, crossing of these two plants uh, uh, created seeds that germinated and gave the, the common wheat plant. This plant uh, shows uh, the improvement of of the varieties during uh, the last 150 years uh, in 1888. Uh, a very uh, prosperous, high yielding uh, variety was this square head master variety from, from uh, UK plant breeding. And a hundred years later, you can see that the, the, the breed, the, the variety Shango gives a lot more uh, yield than, than hundred years ago and the genes that made it possible to, to produce these uh, high yielding uh, uh, varieties were there in wild plants and uh, farmers in the first place and uh, after them uh, plant breeders and scientists they they uh, combined genes in new ways and uh, cultivated plants and high yielding varieties were developed so this is the history of domestication. We have wild barley, which still can be found in the Middle East. Uh, farmers uh, found uh, strains, found uh, uh, genotypes that uh, yielded uh, high, that uh, they, they sowed and they produced and developed slowly during these thousands of years. And uh, those farmers' uh, varieties we call land races. And uh, during the 150 uh, years um, since the late um, 1800s, um, modern breeding produced what we call modern cultivars. When it comes to the conservation of plant genetic resources, this uh, this man is a pioneer. He's, he was a scientist in in, in Russia. Uh, he uh, he uh, discovered that when breeders produced new varieties, they uh, they abandoned the old varieties, and uh, uh, that caused a huge loss of uh, genetic diversity among the farmers and at the farms. So uh, he had the idea that uh, this genetic diversity that were not anymore uh, taken care of by farmers, they had to be conserved in, in gene banks. So, so he traveled around the world in, in Asia, Africa, South America, and collected wild plants. And he collected plants uh, in the fields, in farmers fields. And he established the first gene bank in uh, St. Petersburg. Vavilov also uh, discovered the global centers for the origin of crop species. And uh, these, uh, these regions are the most important for uh, where the ancestors of, uh, of cultivated plants were found. The most important here is number four. It is called the Fertile Crescent in the, in the Middle East, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and so on, where uh, the cradle of uh, civilization and the cradle of farming is ex expected to, uh, to be. But we also have important, uh, important regions in, in uh, 
Peru, for instance, where we had uh, potatoes and tomatoes, and we have maize and beans in Mexico, and we had, uh, um, yeah, you can see rice in the southeast of Asia and so on. So uh, genes, plants, varieties, crops spread from this area all around the world. Uh, we need this crop diversity to, to uh, sustain and increase food production, to fight diseases and pests, to adapt to climate change, and to sustain the culture. So we can say that the plant genetic resources, the crop diversity, are the raw material uh, that plant breeders need to develop new plant varieties and to develop agriculture and, and secure food production for, for the future. Today we have a global network of uh, gene banks. Uh, FAO ha has a register of around 1700 institutions with uh, seed collections. Uh, there are international gene banks, regional gene bank. I'm working at the Nordic Genetic Resource Center, Norgen, which is a regional gene bank for the Nordic countries. We have national gene banks and we have uh, also private and NGOs uh, gene banks. And as you are in the US, uh, uh, Seed Savers Exchange in the US uh, has a quite functional gene bank and have deposited seeds in the seed vault. In total, FAO uh, consider or estimates uh, that there are approximately 2.2 million unique seed samples conserved in, in these gene banks. Seed gene banks, they have a lot of activities. They conserve the genetic resources in the form of seeds. Uh, they multiply and distribute seeds and genetic resources to breeding and research. They investigate and document uh, characteristics and genetic values of this uh, conserved diversity and I also promote the use of this diversity. Uh, just one slide about my gene bank. I'm uh, employed at the Nordic Gene Bank established in 1979, changed name um, into the Nordic Genetic Resource Center in 2008. We have a collection of around 35,000 samples, so more than 500 different species and subspecies. So to Svalbard, uh, the history of uh, storing seeds in uh, Svalbard started in 1984. The Nordic Gene Bank uh, was looking for a place to store duplicates of seeds in the Nordic uh, of the Nordic seed collection. And uh, after considering and evaluating uh, different options, uh, the decision was that a steel container was brought into a coal mine in Svalbard in, uh, in the permafrost part of, uh, the, of the coal mine and this steel container was uh, used for storing seeds and it has to be said that uh, this solution for conserving uh, genetic diversity and securing uh, uh, seed collections in, in a very very cheap and efficient way, I gained a lot of attention around the world. So this is a, a, um, um, it's a, from a Chinese newspaper reporting about the seeds uh, that were conserved in, in the coal mine. And this is from inside the coal mine in 1986, I think. Uh, we had uh, the Nordic gene bank seed safety base collection in glass tubes inside these wooden boxes and we also put in a kind of monitoring project where we have followed the germination uh, ability of the, some important Nordic crops from 1986 until today. And as I said the, the solution for conserving copies of the seed samples in the in permafrost in the in Svalbard gained a lot of attention and uh, um, as many gene banks have lost seeds uh, due to different reasons uh, the need for a global safety facility has been uh, discussed since the 1980s or 90s 
So uh, uh, Norway was asked to, to uh, consider or whether it would be possible to, to uh, offer space for copies of uh, seed collections in Svalbard also for other gene banks and uh, an updated evaluation of options uh, were produced in 2004 and, and the Nordic prime ministers uh, were in Svalbard in June 2006 and, uh, and uh, launched the idea and, and accepted that yes Norway would build this uh, seed vault and offer space to, to other countries' gene banks. This, uh, these are a few photos from the opening in 2008. We have had uh, several uh, distinguished guests at the seed vault. Uh, the UN Secretary General was there in 2008 and he used these words to characterize the, the seed vault and uh, we use this uh, quote quite often to, to underline uh, the importance of the seed vault. Just one slide uh, telling that uh, the Svalbard seed vault is, uh, is part of a global system. FAO, the UN uh, Organization for Food and Agriculture, have developed gene bank standards and, uh, and copying and duplicating uh, seed collections in the seed vault is recommended by FAO. And we work very closely with the different international organizations about this. The objectives of the seed vault is to conserve duplicates of uh, unique seed samples that are conserved in gene banks and in addition to that we discovered that uh, the seed vault became a quite iconic symbol of, uh, of the importance of uh, taking care of genetic diversity so we we now also think that contributing to the public awareness about conservation of genetic resources is, is an important part of the objectives for the seed vault. Why is this put in Svalbard? Well, the idea was established, uh, was launched in the 1980s when the Nordic seeds were put there. But uh, since then, a supporting project for biological and genetic diversity has been in line with Norwegian policies. Uh, Svalbard is a well-suited place. It's, it's a cold climate. It's uh, still permafrost there. It's a good uh, infrastructure and, and so far also a very low level of conflicts. And countries and gene banks trust that Norway and partners will take good care of the seeds. This is a model of the construction. It's in solid rock, it's not in a coal mine. Permafrost provides minus three, minus four degrees, but uh, the seed uh, chambers are artificially frozen down to minus 18, which is the optimal temperature for conserving seeds. Uh, it's the same temperature as the gene banks use, and there are also strong and uh, uh, and advanced monitoring and surveillance systems uh, securing the security then. <clears throat> the organization. The seed vault is uh, built and owned by Norway. Uh, it's managed uh, in, in a partnership between the Norwegian Ministry of Agriculture and Food, the Nordic Genetic Resource Center and the international organization Global Crop Diversity Trust. Seed deposits are handled and organized by my organization, Norgen, and the seed vault facility is maintained by Statsbygg, which is a governmental body uh, having staff in Svalbard and uh, looking after the temperature, you know, the alarms, and so on. Um, gene banks that want to send seeds to the seed vault, they have to sign a deposit agreement. Uh, the main uh, points in this agreement is that it's free of charge to, to deposit seeds in the seed vault. The gene banks is still, uh, are still owning the seeds that are deposited in the seed vault. It's like a bank box. Uh, the plant genetic resources in the seeds should be available for breeding and research, meaning that the gene banks itself uh, must distribute seeds to, um, to breeders and researchers upon request. Um, 
the seeds can be returned to the owner only and uh, um, viability monitoring and regeneration of seeds remain the, the responsibility of this depositor the seed boxes in the seed vault are sealed we do not do anything and with the seeds there we do not investigate the germination uh, that has to be done by the gene banks and it's done uh, by gene banks have the same seed uh, yield at home they have seeds of the same quality same uh, yield same quality at home and, and they test on these seeds when they discover that some seeds uh, lose germination ability they know that new seeds have to be produced and they produce then new seeds for their own collections and they send new samples to the seed vault we open the seed vault uh, three to four times each year. Uh, depositing gene banks uh, know this. We inform them about these dates. They prepare uh, accession lists. It's this list of the seeds they want to, to deposit in the seed vault. And uh, seeds are sent to Svalbard in time for these uh, opening dates. We go to Svalbard. Normally, the seed was is unstuffed. We don't uh, have any stuff there. We go to Svalbard just these few times during the year and bring the seeds into the vault. And uh, then we have some communication with, with the seed bank. Look, thanks. Uh, your seeds are in place in the seed vault, and uh, we update the seed vault, the, the seed portal database, so anyone can can enter this uh, web page and have a look uh, on how uh, and which seeds and which gene banks have sent seeds and so on. Here is a screenshot of the uh, seed portal today. Uh, we have at the moment 93 depositor gene banks. We have uh, this number, one, almost 1 1.2 million seed samples in the vault of uh, almost five, almost 6,000 different species. Here is a uh, search uh, on the seed portal. And I've just searched uh, which species uh, my institution, the Nordic Genetic Resource Center, have uh, deposits, deposited. And uh, as you can see, there are 353 species and uh, the number of species uh, the number of accessions which is the same as seed samples are uh, for uh, barley uh, 12,000 for wheat two two and a half thousand and and so on so you can find all all the information about the seeds in the seed vault by searching this uh, search portal some statistics in total, uh, 1.3 million samples have been deposited. Uh, we have returned at one occasion seed samples to one gene bank. I'm coming back to that. And uh, you see the, the numbers of currently stored samples and the number of species, the number of genera, and also the uh, number of countries of origin and uh, a number of institutes. Uh, this is this curve. Uh, this graph shows the increase of seed samples in the seed vault during these 14 years of operation, and it has uh, increased quite steadily. And uh, and the weak part of this curve is uh, uh, the are these years uh, when uh, seeds were returned to to Ikarda Gene Bank. Um, we have more than 200,000 samples of wheat, which is the most important crop plant in the world, uh, 170,000 samples of uh, rice, and then 90,000 samples of barley, and then tens of thousands of samples of these uh, sorghum, bean, corn, vigna beans, and so on. And in the other end of the scale, we have uh, species that are represented by just one or two samples. Depositor categories, two thirds of uh, the seeds in the seed vault have been deposited by so-called international agricultural research centers. 
Uh, small group have been deposited by regional gene banks. Uh, our Nordic gene bank is one of them. And then around one third have, has been uh, deposited by national uh, gene banks. You have a, a huge national gene bank in the USDA in, in the United States, and I think they have deposited more than 100,000 samples of uh, different species. Um, if I recall correctly, it's around 1,700 different species from the USDA gene bank. Then we have some GNGOs, uh, Seed Savage Exchange in your country is, is one of them. And we have also one private institute that have deposited seeds in the seed vault. Uh, a map showing where uh, where uh, all these gene banks are located and also showing where Svalbard is lo located, quite close to the North Pole actually. There are three seed chambers inside. Each of them have the capacity to store 1.5 million, uh, million samples. Uh, we have just started to, to fill the boxes into the second chamber. One of uh, the chambers were filled up in February 2020. So here's the story about ICARDA, which is the International Center for Agricultural Research in Dry Areas. This was the first gene bank that requested seeds to be returned. Formerly, they had headquarters and gene bank in Aleppo in Syria. But luckily, they had uh, deposited 116,000 seed samples in the seed vault. And uh, when uh, the gene bank in Aleppo was unable to operate normally in 2015, Ikarda uh, requested all seed samples to be returned, not to Syria, but to ICARDA units they already had in Lebanon and Morocco. And uh, thanks to these samples that uh, were sent back from Svalbard, they were able to, to, uh, to establish uh, functional gene banks in these two countries. And already now, a few years later, they have been able to redeposit more than 100 samples in the seed vault. It's a sad story, of course, for the Ricardo Gene Bank in Aleppo and for, for Syria as a country, but for the, for the seed vault, is really, it really shows the, the importance of having a, uh, an international facility like this. At the end, uh, towards the end of my presentation, I just want to show you some pictures. Uh, seeds are dried to a very low water content and packed in, in uh, pouches like this. Mm -hmm. Then they can um, stay alive for decades and for many species for centuries. Uh, they are packed in boxes uh, like this, sent to the seed vault. At the seed vault, we scan them in the security system at the airport. And uh, we do not open the boxes, as I said, but we, we scan them to, to ensure that there is nothing inside but seed pouches. We bring the seeds uh, boxes to the seed vault and uh, open the doors, bring the seed boxes inside. We put labels on showing uh, where in the shelves the, the seed boxes should be placed and uh, some details about uh, the country and the depositor institutes and so on. And uh, bring them inside, put them on the shelves. The whole uh, seed vault is a very low tech facility. There are no, no uh, sophisticated machinery there. So uh, it's all very simple, but uh, uh, knowing uh, these pictures shows different boxes uh, from different gene banks and different countries, and it's it's really fascinating when you, when you go there, even if it looks like uh, like a regular ordinary warehouse, when you know what's inside and when you know that people from so many different countries have been working hard to produce these seeds and and send, the, send them to Svalbard and, and uh, not at least trusting that we take good care of the seeds. It's uh, quite, quite uh, touching, emotional, and uh, it's, it's nice to be a part of a project like this. So I think this is uh, what I had in mind. Uh, I hope you uh, uh, 
um, enjoyed and that this was according to your expectations. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, come forward. Thank you so much, Asmund. Um, I'm not sure if, let me see if I can see the screen here. If anyone has any questions, you're welcome to type them into the Q&A or into the chat. Um, one thing I was, I was reading about the Seed Vault recently and read that Svalbard is the fastest warming place on Earth right now, heating at a rate of five to seven times that of the rest of the world. Um, I'm wondering what sort of climate impacts that you're witnessing in the region and how climate change may impact the stability of the seed vault. Uh, yes, uh, Svalbard is, uh, the climate in Svalbard and in the Arctic is changing uh, quite rapidly, but uh, it, it will still be a cold place. And as we, we are not dependent on permafrost, we, we cool, uh, cool down the seed vault artificially. So, so we do not expect that, uh, that the seed vault or the seeds inside will be uh, affected by climate change. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question from a participant asking if you have means to store seeds that do not tolerate freezing or that need to be kept moist for continuous viability. Uh, if I understood correctly, uh, seeds that are concerned in gene banks have to be orthodox seeds. Uh, orthodox seeds are seeds of crop plants that uh, uh, can be dried to a very low water content and then be freezed. Okay. And, uh, there are non-orthodox seeds, coconuts, nuts of the many trees, uh, tropical fruits and so on, they have non-orthodox seeds and they cannot be dried so they cannot be stored in the seed vault. Okay. I, can, I see some, uh, I just opened the, the chat here and I can see some some questions there. Should I just yes. take? Very good, if you'd like to do that. Yeah. Yes, the seed vault is just for agricultural crop seeds. Um, uh, is there any other facility in the world similar to the seed vault? Uh, actually, no. Uh, there are, as I uh, showed, 1,700 uh, gene banks of different kinds, but there are only one seed vault offering uh, room and space for du for conserving uh, duplicates of the seeds that are conserved in gene banks. Uh, we do not know how long different seeds can be expected to be viable. Some seeds have uh, need to be replaced after uh, few years others can stand uh, uh, stay alive for very many years i i think the the oldest seeds that uh, germinated was an arabidopsis seed found in permafrost in in siberia that uh, germinated after 28000 years <laughs> and uh, some crop seeds if they are dried properly and frozen uh, we expect that they can stay alive for perhaps more than a thousand years but others needs to be replaced more often great could you also read the questions that you're answering osmond yeah uh, i know your bank focuses on agricultural plant is there a similar bank for plants of high ecological importance well we have um, i don't think i have all information about this but um uh, we have the Millennium Seed Bank in, in uh, UK. They have a Millennium Seed project. Uh, they cooperate with the botanical gardens and botanists all over the world. And they have uh, collected and uh, stored a lot of uh, rare wild plants. So that's one example. Um, another is uh, a seed vault. Uh, called Baek Dudaegan Seed Vault in, in uh, South Korea. They have uh, built, uh, inspired by the seed vault in Svalbard, they have built the seed vault uh, and offer uh, space for copies of uh, 
of uh, plants from from the wild. Does the scanning of boxes at the airport damage disease? No, it does not. Uh, is the seed vault primarily concerned with food crops and the livestock feed? Yes, the answer is yes. Or is there any effort to preserve other types of seeds, for example, trees? Well, there are several efforts for conserving uh, seed, uh, tree or forest genetic resources as, as well. FIO ha has a commission for, uh, for crop plants, but they also have a, a commission for uh, genetic resources of trees. And uh, uh, they are discussing how to make an international system for conserving tree uh, genetic resources in the same way as, as uh, it already has been in place for crop plants. So uh, at the moment, uh, international legislation and arrangements for, pro for conserving uh, forest genetic resources uh, are not as advanced as for crops, but I would actually expect, it's my own opinion, that in the future we will also conserve tree seeds in the seed vault. Uh, are there any seeds in your vault that are no longer viable elsewhere, extinct? Well, as I said, um, we conserve seeds of crop plants and we do not conserve rare species we we conserve rare genotypes of quite common species so actually i would expect that more than 99 percent of the seeds in the seed world um, exists only in a gene bank uh, or two and in the seed world so so they are extinct in in the wild they are not used by farmers they are not found in the wild so most of the genetic resources that are conserved in gene banks and in the seed vault uh, they are conserved there just because they do not longer exist in, in the wild or in, in the farming. Uh, is the goal of the vault to store the physical seed or genetic information about the seed? Are there plans for synthetic seeds? <laughs> And um, we store physical seeds that can germinate. Um, um, I think that's the that's the, the task of the seed vault. Uh, I'm sure that the scientists all over the world are having plans for how to store uh, uh, information uh, about the, the genetic uh, combinations of, of crop plants and, and have plans for how that can be. Uh, conserved, but th that is uh, at the moment not not a uh, task for the seed vault. We also have some questions in the Q and A. Uh, as when someone is asking, are seeds that germinate upon falling from the plant, like some oak species, able to be preserved and paused? Um, I. Uh... Do you see my screen still? Yes, uh, I do. Which of this uh, should I start at the top? <laughs> yes, I am concerned about global warming, but not for the seeds and the seed vault, but uh, <laughs> in general, I'm concerned, and especially for uh, for the, the for the society and and uh, in Svalbard. Maybe start at the bottom in, in this uh, chat. Uh, are seeds that germinate upon falling from the plant, like some oak species, able to be preserved and paused? Um, if you are, I don't think I can ask generally about this, but oak, oak nuts. Uh, uh, nuts from oak cannot be dried and, and frozen in a, in a gene bank because uh, those seeds are not uh, orthodox seeds. Do you have seeds such as Roundup, ready seeds, and other with systemic pesticides? Um, I'm not sure I understand that question. Uh, gene banks are producing seeds and, and they are cultivating uh, with uh, modern methods. Uh, so they use uh, 
pesticides when needed uh, according to national legislation so so uh, there are certainly uh, uh, certainly some some uh, traces of uh, of uh, pesticides in in many of those samples i would guess uh, how do you keep from deceased or tamed seeds well um, gene banks are asked to uh, produce high quality seeds and send just high high quality seeds to the seed vault and uh, we we have uh an, this experiment in the coal mine uh, i slightly briefly touched upon uh, we introduced in 1986 uh, seed samples that were contaminated with diseases and uh, we see now after 35 years that if you are uh, freezing a seed uh, and conserving a seed uh, that are contaminating with the pests uh, they are uh, you also conserve the disease that are connected to the seeds you also conserve the pests that are uh, the, the bacteria virus or fungi that are is the uh, Svalbard climate warming? Uh, do you need to increase the capacity of the mechanical refrigeration? Um, the, yes, uh, the climate warming is very severe in Svalbard and uh, we quite recently uh, built a new uh, freezing system, freezing uh, system, yes, and uh, uh, we believe that the, the system we have now uh, is sufficient for keeping the seeds frozen for for several decades at least 20 50 50 years or so and uh, there has been uh, climate scientists in svalbard have made estimations saying that we will if the if the climate warming continues we will have uh, uh, permafrost around the seed vault uh, around 100 years more from now so after that we have to rely on, on artificial cooling only we have a couple more questions in the webinar chat box now Asmund um <clears throat> what, what time is it now <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I, I have a it's yes. one it's one fourteen. We only have two more questions. I think no. one one person is asking, are all the seeds there ones that need cold stratification? In other words, do they need to be have a period of cold prior to germinating or are no. Okay. No, no. no. They don't need that. The, the, the freezing is uh, is uh, for uh, conserving them long term, for keeping uh, them viable for a long term. Okay. And then the final question we have is, in terms of safeguarding crop diversity, where are there gaps in research? And in other words, what still needs to be studied regarding <laughs> crop diversity? <laughs> a big oh. question. Yes, uh, a lot need to be uh, be, be done. Uh, we still need to uh, to invest in plant breeding. We need to invest in collecting uh, crop wild relatives. There are still uh, genetic resources uh, in wild plants that are related to crops. These need to be collected, uh, investigated and conserved and, and made available for uh, plant breeding and research. Um, we need uh, plant breeding and research to, to secure plant uh, and, and food production uh, uh, adapted to climate change. That's uh, very important, of course. And um, it, it, it's uh, more important than ever that uh, that scientists and plant breeders and, and poly politicians allocate uh, funds to uh, to uh, to plant breeding and research uh, to secure food production. Wonderful. 
Well, yeah. thank you very much for taking the time to join us today, all the way from Norway. And we we thoroughly enjoyed this wonderful presentation and we'll be sending the recording out to all of the registrants today. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the reason why I asked about the time, I, I can see it now, it's it's 1917 here, is that uh, I have another presentation in 10 minutes from now. Very good. Well, we'll let you go. You're very popular yeah. today. Okay. Thank you so but, uh, much. This was thank excellent. You, thank you so much for listening and thanks for the questions. Uh, it's always nice to, to have questions because then you know that uh, someone listened. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very many thank yous coming in over the chat. Austin. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye. Go ahead and stop the recording.